Man, Pete, I, I think I'd like the rest of this to go. Oh, you don't like it? Oh, no, I love it. I love it. I just can't finish it. Oh, well, why don't I just leave it right here and maybe you can finish it later? No, Pete. I want this to go. Fine. <laughs> there, it's gone. What'd you do that for? Well, you said you wanted it to go. Well, I think he meant he wanted it to take home. Oh, you wanted a carry-home container. Oh, I'm sorry, Stan. Uh, Lou, Lou, could I have a, a third of a piece of meatloaf, a spoonful of mashed potatoes, and six peas? That's for here for carry-home. Oh, that's for carry-home? It's not carry-home. It's to go. It's to go. You act like you've never heard of the expression to go. Well, we've just never heard it used that way before. I, I mean, if you say to me... I want you to go. I think you want me to leave. But now I know when you say that, you want me to come home with you. No, I don't want you to come. Just forget it. No, no, it's fun to learn the funny way people talk. Are hey, you on gravy on this day? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, just on the side. In a separate container. You should have a book of these, Stan. Just give me my uh, carry home, would you? Step on it. No, no! Big City, big frown. Big City, slow down. Stan Hooper, moving to a small, small town. What is a capillary? Small blood vessel connecting veins to arteries. Yes! <laughs> what is the aorta? An artery in the heart. Yeah, but how big is it? Big. It's good enough. <laughs> Studying, are you? Yeah, I got a test in biology tomorrow. He gets a kiss every time he gets a question right. Well, how are you doing so far? Very well. <laughs> hey, Stan. Hey, Pete, can I get some coffee? Okay. Now, when you say, can I get some coffee? <laughs> do you mean... You want to go get it yourself, or you want me to get it for you? You know, I would like you to bring me some coffee in a cup. It always comes in a cup, Stan. <laughs> hey, Stan, we're having a potluck after the election on Friday night. You want to bring something? We need crab salad. What election? Imitation crab is fine. Oh, imitation's better. Ooh, I like it better. Yeah, so can we put you down for imitation crab salad? Who are we voting for? The mayor. Oh, yeah? Who's running? The mayor. Well, who's running against him? No one. Well, no one ever does. What would be the point? Well, the point would be to give people a choice. Well, people who just choose the mayor, they always do. Well, they always do because no one ever runs against him. Right. Where are we losing you, Stan? You're not losing me. I'm just shocked. I'm shocked that, that here, in the heartland of American democracy, that people don't have a choice come election day. I, I mean, this country was built on small town elections. On two men standing on a bandstand in the village green, airing their views so that the, the populace of that small town could choose a candidate that truly represents them. Stan, if you don't want to bring the crab salad, just say so. No, I'm saying somebody should run against this guy just on principle. Mr. Hooper, you should run. Oh, no, not me. Not no, me. you would be great. And... You have the time. You work a whole minute a week. <laughs> hey, you know, you really should think about it because candidates don't have to bring food to the party. You'd be off the hook for that salad. I don't think it should be me because I'm new to town. Not everybody knows me yet. Hey, that might give you a chance. You're a new face. Oh, a fresh face. And you're tall. People like tall. Look at Lincoln. And he didn't have that fresh face. You could actually win. Well, I, I wouldn't be doing it to win. I'd, uh... I'd just be doing it to preserve democracy. That could be your campaign slogan. Well, sure, I'd vote for someone who wanted to preserve democracy. It's better than voting for a guy who just didn't want to make a crab salad. <laughs> oh, I haven't made campaign posters since I ran for student council secretary. And one <laughs> Big. Don't you think these are a little corny? Oh, sure they're corny. That's the point. It makes Stan seem fun, less stiff. Oh, I don't think of Mr. Hooper as being stiff. I just think of him as a nice man. Mm -hmm. He's somewhat ectomorphic. A frail body build with little or no muscular development. Yes! <laughs> hey, 
your gas. You know that bandstand I was going to make my speeches from? Well, I just found out the town doesn't have one. They have a perfectly good village green, no bandstand. That's going to be my platform. Stan Hooper will give this town a bandstand. Well, we've got the posters that are going to get you elected. Oh, yeah? What do you think? Uh, if you... Carrot. If you care at all, if, oh, yeah. if you care at all, you'll vote for Stan. <laughs> and that's what's that, huh? Wooden shoe. Wooden shoe, like to... <laughs> wooden shoe, like... Wooden shoe, like to vote for Stan. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, yeah, you got another one. Orange shoe, glad you're voting for Stan. Yeah, that's a good one. Hey, uh, what happened to my, uh, my idea? Oh, what was your idea? You remember uh, Stan Hooper for mayor? Oh, yeah, we talked that over. We didn't think it was that funny. It wasn't supposed to be funny. Well, it has no personality. Maybe we shouldn't try to give him a personality. I mean, we only have till Friday. But we want him to win. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what it's about, Ryan. It's about the process. It's not about winning. Aren't you glad you're voting for Stan? Clever. I like that. That's not the one we're going with. The figures. What are you going with? We're going with Stan Hooper for mayor. Up all night crafting that, were you? Because he's not interested in winning. No, Chelsea, it's not that I'm not interested in winning. It's just that I'm not doing this to win. I'm doing it because people deserve two candidates. Well, you have got my vote, honey. No, he doesn't. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> uh, no, no, he doesn't, Mrs. H. Women don't have the vote in Waterford Falls. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, that's, that's illegal. It's on the books. I understand. You have got to make this your campaign issue. <laughs> yeah, you're darn right I'm going to make this my campaign issue. You'll certainly get the women's vote. Yeah, I'll certainly. <laughs> this might not be the way to go. Dan! <laughs> well, you know, uh, uh, the women don't have the vote anyway, so you know what they say. you got to get on the inside there before you can make change. So you're, so you're not going to say anything? No, of course I'm going to say something. I'm just not going to... I'm not going to beat people over the head with it, you know. I, I'm going to be smooth, you know. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, allude to it. I'm going to do a lot of, uh, I'm going to do a lot of, I'm going to do a lot of alluding. I thought you were promoting old-fashioned values. Hey, what could be more old-fashioned than women not having the vote? <laughs> it's just a little joke. Uh, once I become mayor, that will be my first order of business. I will make a, a big speech about it. Women having the right to vote. From the new bandstand. Good evening, Fred. Ha, ah, Gary, Hoopers, Ryan, Chutney. It's Chelsea, Dad. Can I get you something, Fred? You know what would be refreshing? A nice Waldorf salad. Well, I'd have to go to the market for grapes and walnuts. Well, don't think I don't appreciate it. Hey, Fred, what brings you down here? Well, it's such a pleasant evening. My wife suggested a stroll, so I took one. What's going on here? Oh, we're helping Mr. Hooper with his campaign. He's running for mayor. So I heard. Well, if he's good enough to raise my boy, he's got my vote. Can I talk to you on the porch for a minute, Hooper? Yeah, sure. Um, Fred, uh -huh. how do you feel about women not having the vote? Oh, I think it's a travesty, sweetheart. An absolute travesty. <laughs> Can I give you some campaign advice? Oh, certainly, Fred, certainly. Don't run. You can't beat this Griffin guy. He's a political animal. He'll crush anyone to win. He'll jam his fist on your throat, pull out your heart, and eat it for breakfast. Believe me, I know. He's a dear friend of mine. Well, look, Fred, I'm not going to be intimidated by a guy. I don't care how powerful he is. Well, you're a braver man than I am. Do you even have a campaign slogan? Yeah, I got one. It's, uh, Stan Hooper for mayor. <laughs> not bad, Hooper. But you're going to need something a lot stronger than a funny campaign slogan to topple Bud Griffin. I wish you well. I got to go. Have that Waldorf salad sent over. A vote for Stan Hooper is a vote for change. A vote for Stan Hooper is a vote for democracy. Oh, hey, Gus. The new hairpiece looks great. What was the word? <laughs> Okay, okay, Pete, you did a great job. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Thanks for your support, Pete. Oh, hi there. Hi, Stan Hooper. I'm running for mayor. Oh, uh, hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm proposing 
Let this town get a bandstand. Oh, that would be lovely. Yeah, so I can count on your support? Well, I'd love to be able to support you, but I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it'll be right. Well, why wouldn't it be right? Oh, I'm the mayor. <laughs> You're Mayor Griffin? Yeah, you can call me Bud. Uh, say, Pete, uh, uh, you got my carrot home ready? Oh, sure. Right, Lou, uh, Mayor Griffin's here for Fred Hawkins' sandwich. No, no, oh, don't, uh, don't bother to wrap it up. Just give it to me quick. He, he, he gets a little impatient. <laughs> well, wait a second, wait a second. Why are you getting Fred Hawkins' sandwich? Well, because he told me to, and he told me to be quick about it. There you go. No, you put the tomato on it. She's gonna hate that. Well, 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 take it off, Mayor. No, it's too late. The juice is on the bread. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. <laughs> That's the unbeatable five-term mayor? It's just the power of the office that makes him seem larger than life. I, I don't understand. He works for Fred? No, no, no. He runs the bait and tackle shop. But, but Fred bought him all his elections. It only seems right that Bud do him some favors in return. We don't buy elections. Well, they don't pay for themselves, Stan. <laughs> this is a completely corrupt system you have. I mean, one man controls the whole town. Women don't have the vote. There's no bandstand. I mean, how can you let things be like this? Well, we, we've just always prided ourselves on letting things be. Like the Beatles song, Let Things Be. <laughs> What is this? Don't give Griffin my sandwich unwrapped. He's been handling worms all morning. Hooper, how's the campaign coming? Ready to drop out? Yeah, I'm not ready to drop out, especially after I see how things work around here. What do you mean? Griffin's no political animal. He's your political puppet. And I'm going to change things. Well, I admire your integrity, Hooper. How about this? I have Griffin drop out, and you become my puppet. Uh, Stan Hooper is nobody's puppet. This election is not up for sale. Not anymore. Bud, I'm challenging you to a debate. That is, if you're man enough. Am I man enough? Yes, you're man enough. <laughs> Ask him where and when. Where and when? Here. Tomorrow, 2 o'clock. Tell him to make it 2.30, Bud. You're waxing my car tomorrow. Make can we... I heard what he said. I don't know why you won't let me put a little mousse in your hair. It'll help you get the women's vote. Oh, that's right. There isn't one. I can't believe you're obsessing about this one little thing. I've been all over town alluding to it. Okay, everybody, settle down, settle down, take a seat. The debate's about to begin. Now, I'd like to welcome our moderator, Harriet McGibbon, from our fine local paper, the Waterford Falls Truth. And we'd like to thank the Waterford Falls Truth for sponsoring today's debate. And the Waterford Falls Truth wants to thank Fred Hawkins for sponsoring the Waterford Falls Truth. We will begin with each candidate making a brief opening joke, Mr. Hooper. <laughs> well, I, uh, I have no opening joke, but... I am here to talk about the issues. Not funny. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. The only thing I know about debate is that it goes on the end of the poll. Mr. Hooper, you have five minutes for a rebuttal. Well, why would I rebut that? Oh. Very well. Next, we will hear from Fred Hawkins. Hey, whoa, whoa. He's not a candidate. Mr. Hooper, you had your chance to speak. The floor is yours, Fred. Friends, neighbors, employees of Hawkins Cheese, and I see several of you in the crowd. There's Margaret Stillwater back there. Smuggles home a brick of cheddar now and again. I don't mind. We're all family. There's old Ed Sprague, just two years away from his pension. It'd be a shame if, uh, well, anyway. <laughs> the point is, when you're ready to make your decision, vote with your heart. Uh, and if it knows what's good for it, it'll choose Bud Griffin, our mayor, for mayor. I will now open the floor to questions. This question is for both candidates. 
How many night crawlers come in the dollar fifty bucket? Mr. Hooper? Well, that's not a fair question. He runs a bait and tackle shop. Oh, quit ducking it, Hooper. Fine, I don't know how many night crawlers come in a dollar fifty bucket, but uh, Mr. Mayor. Thirty to fifty. It depends on the girth and the weight of the worms. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Uh, Red Shannon, head of the Waterford Falls Communist Party. Uh, this is for Comrade Hooper. Uh, oh, oh, oh. No, he's he's not my comrade. I want you to know that you've got the Bolshevik vote. I don't, I don't want the Bolshevik vote. And I enjoyed your minute last week. Oh, did you like that one? Yeah, I like great. that one. There you have it, everybody. The man hates America. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't hate America. Now, listen, I only got in this race to, to preserve democracy. Oh, well, then we withdraw our support. <laughs> Mr. Hooper, as challenger, you have one minute for closing remarks. Thank you. Look, all week long you've been hearing me talk about my vision for Waterford Falls. In the short run, to install a town bandstand. In the long run, to one day get a town band. <laughs> but my real vision is to give control of Waterford Falls back to the people and away from the power brokers. Power broker! <laughs> Look, people, Bud Griffin has been our mayor for 20 years, and I don't see a need to change. And that's all I have to say. And I'm saying 20 years of tyranny under one man's rule deserves a change. And I'm saying that Waterford Falls deserves a change. And I'm saying that Stan Hooper represents that change. Yes! And one of the changes he's going to make is to give women back the vote. <laughs> But not in my lifetime! <laughs> I just want you to all know that I recognize and appreciate your hard work and your tireless efforts. Honey, I know you came into the slate, but you've got people talking. I think you might actually win. Well, the votes are in. It won't be long now. I have never seen a turnout like this. I swear every man in town voted. Chelsea, doesn't it upset you that women can't vote? Oh, it would bother me a lot more if I were old enough to vote. But a lot of things bother me, Mrs. Hooper. Like women not being allowed to swim in the quarry. Okay, there's more food, everybody. Eat up. Everybody, I got the results. Oh, the results. How'd I do? Well, I thought you should open the envelope yourself. Okay. Ooh. Uh, here goes, everybody. Okay. For Mayor Griffin, 174 votes. For Stan Hooper. You lost? Yeah. How close was it? It was two votes. You lost by two votes? I got two votes. Oh, hey! <laughs> what are you cheering for? Your two votes. Good for you. <laughs> That's not good. I thought you people were all behind me. Now listen. I want to know who in this room voted for me. <laughs> You're lying. Now, I know I voted for myself. That's one. That means only one other person voted for me. Now, I'm going to ask you again. Who voted for me? You're liars. You're all liars. And stop eating. Don't eat my food anymore. Pete, Lou, I can't believe you guys. You're the ones that encouraged me to get into this in the first place. I wanted to vote for you, Stan. I just I couldn't. I'm set in my ways. The whole town is. Damn our set ways! Speech! 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 What do you want to speak? I'll give you a speech. This town should have real elections with a real mayor. That's my speech. And women should be allowed to vote. Yes! And we should be allowed to swim in the quarry, too. No. Oh, all right, forget it. <laughs> Stan, honey, I'm sorry. But I just want you to know that the man who made that speech is the man I would have voted for. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Hmm. A lot of good that does me. There he is, the man of the hour. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.
you, everyone. Great speech, bud. Now get in line for me at the buffet. That campaign poster makes me laugh every time I see it. Hooper, congratulations on a hard-fought campaign. But I told you, bud, it was a powerhouse. You know what I don't understand, Fred, is I don't understand how these people can just settle for this. Well, they're simple people, Hooper. All they care about is food on the table, a warm bed to sleep in, and a place where men can swim. <laughs> they just like things the way they are. And you know, I like you, too. Eh, yeah, you don't like me, Fred. Sure I do. Where do you think your other vote came from? <laughs> Fred, you voted for me? I said I would, and I'm a man of my word. And just so you don't walk away empty-handed, I'm going to give you what you wanted. You're going to give me democracy and equality for all people? That's a tough one. How about a bandstand? Hey, a bandstand, in some ways, a bandstand is better. Fred, here, I'll take that. You know what I was thinking? The bandstand could be all redwood, like real masculine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. red, white, and blue yeah. banners. Oh, and, and Bud could paint it for us. Wouldn't that be cool? Like that?